And welcome back to Aviva Stadium in Houston, Texas. You see the Great Lakes Thunderbirds in gray right there. This is a quarterfinal National Collegiate Rugby All-Star Shield Championship. They're going to be taking on the Tri-State Foundry from the greater New York area. John Broker here with Pat Clifton for this matchup. You see Chief Chifumbu getting ready to kick off here. One of the Wheeling University players in this team. And we are underway in this matchup. Ball comes back to Great Lakes immediately. Great Lakes, Hudson Montgomery, the big fella from Thomas Moore, rumbled his way towards the 22. Tri-State Foundry coming across quick. Hayden Wall gets well managed by that Tri-State defense. Chief Chifumbu, good defense coming in from Tri-State, aware of the attacking threat posed across the board from this Great Lakes team, Chifumbu decides to go to the boot. Gets that one back into the hands of Kyrie Poole, where number 11. There's Kyrie Poole, a Nazareth player. He is a stepper. Sorry, not Kyrie Poole. He's got the ball away to Tony Robinson. Robinson makes the run. Glance down, didn't see the pool pass, but away we go. Captain Reed Hammond, St. Bonaventure University, a Fairfield prep graduate, the Jesuits. Big ball up there to Georgie Basuku from Whitestone, New York. Not content enough to say Queens. Ball comes around the other direction. Tri-State Foundry on the run. Big hit in the middle of the field. Trying to rip it away are the Thunderbirds. Ball back in hand. Nicholas Davis puts that through. There's Robinson. Robinson's dangerous. Robinson, Tony Robinson from Nazareth College, Jacksonville, Florida. Originally, but ball rolls in a touch. Can be line out here for the Great Lakes. All action, Pat, in this first couple of minutes. Absolutely. I love Tony Robinson. Only watched him play these last couple of days, but he has grown on me. Small, diminutive player, but very purposeful. He's got a step or two, already decided before he ever touches the ball. Lightning player, live wire. Him and Kyrie Poole are a, dightening, or a very dynamic duo there on the wing, both Nazareth players for this uh, Tri-State squad. Played for the Jacksonville Wolverines. Not going to make any Red Dawn comments for that one. Ball comes down for Great Lakes. Great Lakes running the ball in the middle of the field. The referee. Well, this one, we're going to find out. I have a Kira Doe, but that's clearly not him. But we're going to come back for a penalty against Tri-State. So it's going to be an opportunity here. There's a nice double tackle there from the foundry. Unfortunately, though, one of the players slipped up a little high, got his arm around the neck, and it was a bit of a late call, but a good call coming in from the sideline. So you love to see the team of three working well as they are here early on. Ball finds touch. A little collision there. It's going to be a line out just inside their own half for Great Lakes. And Clow. Nice to see the sportsmanship helping his opposite up, even though he may have clobbered him without him ever touching the ball. Well taken by Gray Lakes. Had a knock going back. Chief Chip Fumbu spills that one forward. Ball comes up into the hands with a scrum advantage here for Tri-State. They're going to want to go quick on this one, looking off in different directions. Ball is up to Basuku. The big unit's going to take that one in. Suku 6'1", 265 out of Hostra. Get the ball there to Sean Collins. Sean Collins just outside the 22. Players trying to dig that away, but it's going to go through the hands to Gubana, the Marist Red Fox. Gubana, Italian-born player, playing in Poughkeepsie, New York now. James Kimberly is coaching with the Tri-State squad all together. And their rising stars team. Coaches for this team, Tui Osborne. Rob Chudzik from UConn, Nipper, and the contact coach, Craig Wilson. Basuku gets rid of that ball and playing well are the Tri-State Foundry, putting together the phases, certainly. All these teams looking a little more crisp today, Pat. We'll talk about that in just a second. Bubana flat on the line there. He's got a runner, finds it. Damian Huggins. Damian Huggins, the Syracuse University a sophomore, takes that one in, but penalty against Tri-State Foundry, after all that good work, it's going to be Great Lakes Thunderbirds opportunity here. That's a great turnover there by Tyler Waterstrott, the Central Michigan flanker. Counting major, senior. It's a good turnover. 
Really impressed by Sean Collins early on from the Tri-State Foundry. He's had a couple of nice carries. SUNY Oswego guy. Um, that's what you love to see. SUNY Oswego, in the old systems, it would have been hard for a guy like uh, from SUNY Oswego to get a look up, but you see him here this weekend. And look at this replay. This is the turnover. Just over the ball, perfectly over the ball. And going to get that penalty 10 out of 10 times. Great turnover. A couple of good flankers here. Throw on 40 meter line. Well taken by the Thunderbird. The pass looping back in and over. Water Strat has to come to the rescue once again there. Get that one moving. Chief Chipfumbu. Moves the ball wide. Great Lakes have some pace that wide if they can get it there. Last foot here, guys. Last foot. Ball coming across. Knee Miller, so important yesterday to his team, gets the ball to Hudson Montgomery. Montgomery has players coming on to him, but he rushes a couple away. A lot of fun to watch. Hudson Montgomery really understands what the team is trying to accomplish. We're going to come here for a penalty against Tri-State Foundry. Offside, to according to the referee. It's hard to imagine a guy like Hudson Montgomery not ending up in a Major League Rugby jersey at some point soon. Surprised not team drafted earlier last fall, along with a couple of his teammates there from Thomas Moore. He's looking good early on here. That ball comes up, comes back the way of the foundry, rolling towards touch. Adrian Bula Bula stretch from Yale goes in for it. But knock-ons come in. It's going to be a scrum here for Tri-State, the foundry. Captain Hammond having a conversation with the referee from Sandy Hook, Connecticut. Take another look at it, Pat. It looks like it comes off a of foundry going forward. I think that counts as a catch. So, really, I don't see a, a knock on at the end of the day. Fortunate call there for the foundry. These guys are really testing each other in the early goings. Points of contact, and here in the scrum early too, you can tell each of them wanting to make a point. Winner of this game, play the winner of Pacific Coast Grizzlies versus Mid-Atlantic Sharks, moving forward in a semifinal. Thunder Sharks, free kick here. Players coming in illegally from Great Lakes. He's going to bring that one back, however. Nicholas Davis wanted to go quick. The Syracuse computer science major from Seattle, Washington. Played for the East Side Lions in high school. Now, different weather system up in upstate New York. There's no doubt there. Make sure your elbow's up, okay? That I know it's him and I can penalize him. Okay? Okay. Going to do it all over again. Such a contentious battleground that both teams fighting tooth and nail to not give any kind of seed any ground whatsoever. Ball at Hammond's feet. Going to get that one away as Davis put it into the hands of Gerald Lanning. Iona Gale plays for... Not very good program. We have another penalty here, this time against the Thunderbirds. And quickly, Gubana steps in looking for touch. 20 minute halves wants to keep things moving forward. Eight and a half minutes, no score as of yet in this quarterfinal here at the National Collegiate Rugby All Star Shield. Quite a kick from Gubana there, Pat. Puts him in a great position to attack with them all from here. The Red Fox and the Red Sox. Got a big leg, great player. Aaron Juma, the flanker from Wheeling, just a little bit overzealous in that ruck. Thought he had the rights to the ball and didn't want to concede him. Ball up, well taken by Tri-State. Player reaching over, good mall foundation, driving it on. Some hands coming in, they're going to have to dig for this one. Ball working its way back into the hands of Davis. Davis digging it out of there. Players coming. Looks like they're coming off sides from Great Lakes, but referee says enough of this. That was a mall. It was held up by Great Lakes. Scrum for them just outside their own five-meter line. 
opportunity squandered for the foundry. Like Ivan Delgado was just munching his way through that tri-state pack like Pac-Man. And Aaron Juma saying, you're not used to this, boys, is what he's saying. Big turnover there for the Great Lakes. That was a, uh, a big uh, momentum booster, ego booster for the Thunderbirds, but they've got a tough job now of trying to exit cleanly. It's surely the foundry are not going to let this go lightly. Ball coming here. Chip Fumbu moves that one out. <laughs> looked like he was going to knock that ball on. Not sure if he caught it, but the, the, the pass was forward nonetheless, setting up the foundry for erasing that big turnover by Delgado, erasing that scrum. And now we've got another scrum, the foundry with another huge prime opportunity, probably even a better one. They can go right now. Wasn't really an option previously. You got it, the Thunderbirds, you can see the defender moving from their right of the scrum to the left. Chip Fumbu now positioning his body to cover both sides. See landing out to the left or right hand side here. They've got numbers. They've got Nicholas Davis. Davis to put this one in. Ham into the back. We'll see what they decide to do. Gubana they lurking just off your screen there to the left. He's going to bring this one up. Ivan Delgado, I like the way this guy plays. He's got a dog in him. He just tries to win every single battleground, every point of contention across the park. Scrum, ruck, line out, the mall. Ivan Delgado is a competitor. Played at Morton West High School at rugby in Chicago in high school. All-State Player of the Year in 2017 for Illinois. We already discussed his pet lizard Magnus in his notes here, so I won't talk about that again. Here comes Hammond. Hammond, well tackled immediately. Has to get that ball back. Players digging in from Great Lakes there, but unable to come up with it. A penalty against. Player coming off their feet for the Tri-State Foundry. That was Waterstrot. We've seen him come up with a couple of huge plays when the Thunderbirds have had their heels on their own goal line. He comes up huge there with a massive turnover or tackle on that one, giving them all the advantage, putting them on the front foot, and ultimately leading to the turnover. Look at Waterstrot. It's, an eight-man pick should never lose ground, and Waterstrot took five, six yards away from him there, which gave the Thunderbirds all the momentum they needed to turn that ball over in that next ruck. Huge play by Waterstrot. That's two huge, huge plays he's made deep in his own end. Played for Rockford High School in Rockford, Illinois, of course. The Eagle Scout Waterstrat. Eagle Scout is a Boy Scout, not as the U.S. Eagles. Chip Fumbu pushes that one in the middle of the field. A good tackle comes in there on Karamazondo. Now pressure on Chip Fumbu, but he hangs a high one up just outside. There's Robinson. Robinson, he's able to find some room. Robinson across the 22. Big pick up there from Sean Collins. Sean Collins barreling his way into contact. Chip Fumbu tries to turn it over, but not happening there. Reed Hammond takes it on a little further. Big number one, James Aitken, takes that one in from St. Bonaventure at the Millfield School of Doncaster, England. Right players in the way there. Players coming off their feet. It's been refereed like this all weekend, and Great Lakes able to keep it scoreless despite Tri-State Foundry. Getting down their bit. A little back chat. You know, I, in my younger days, I was anti-back chat penalties, but seeing where we are in the game, the desperate need for referees at the grassroots level, Probably the biggest thing stunting growth in rugby in America is the lack of coaches and the lack of referees, and referee abuse is certainly part of that. So that was uh, yeah, certainly. give them the 10 meters, back it up. It's a horrible mistake from the Tri-State Foundry, even if this was a mistake in a call, which I think it probably was. To back yourself up another 40, 50 meters is just something you can't do. Thunderbirds move it out near midfield. Get the ball back to Chip Fumbu. Karamazondo again looking to make some ground. A referee is going to whistle players off sides against the foundry. 
where's my marker? Damien Huggins, a little slow to combat. Come on. Guys, this is going to be the mark here, so back 10 from this spot. Yeah, I've got coming up early from the line out. So we take a look at the other quarterfinal coming up, Pacific Coast versus Mid-Atlantic. Winners play winners of this game we have going on right now, Great Lakes and Tri-State. And, of course, the losers as well are going to continue on in that bracket. As you see, the Thunder Sharks, as they're calling themselves this weekend, Mid-Atlantic, a little jersey snafu and delivery. So Great Lakes, kind enough to give them some jerseys. Pacific Coast, a finalist last year, will be looking to do a little bit more this year. It's going to be an interesting, interesting afternoon of rugby here in Houston, Texas, Aviva Stadium. We continue on with the Great Lakes. They have a penalty. Under five minutes to go in the first half here. Just 20-minute halves. Foundry in their Rugby New York kit, Pat. Their sponsored Major League Rugby teams getting very involved in this uh, relationship there with Rugby New York for Tri-State. Major League Rugby has some great initiatives, some great things that they're doing to incentivize grassroots development. You can win yourself a little extra salary cap room and, and some great incentives, and I think that that's part of why you're seeing the Free Jacks out here with the Independents, and it's why you're seeing Rugby New York out here with the Foundry. A wonderful development, something that's – that connective tissue between the different levels of the game is something we really need to build up. he going to get treated on the sideline? We're losing a foundry player here. So I'm going to assume we can going off for a head injury assessment. Nee Miller, senior from Bowling Green, business tech major. I like this two screens. It's like uh, NCR Red Zone. <laughs> I don't know which game to call or which game to watch. Here. This is exciting stuff. It almost <laughs> seems like the Great Lakes Thunderbirds are playing two games at one time. Because yes, of the it, jersey. It does snap. a little bit. <laughs> uh, two by two. Two meters and two meters. We're going to be doing, doing a little bit of a red zone later on. where We have the CRC7s coming up, so we're going to have some red zone opportunities there. It's going to be an interesting Interesting weekend of rugby in the greater D.C. area. Pat, next break, can talk more about the event as a whole, but next level rugby continuing to improve the visual perception of the game of rugby here in America. A little break there from Great Lakes at Thunderbirds. Last foot here, guys. Chip Fumbu looking for a little wraparound. Pass doesn't quite go to hand. Ball not cooperating with him. Dry State Foundry coming up and over. Able to recycle that one. Off to their right-hand side, they have some runners, but big Ivan Delgado. Ball spills, goes backwards according to the referee. Karamazondo has to come in and clean that one up. Able to recycle. Foundry defense doing a good job of closing down some of these spaces there for runners to come at as Mulea. Looks for someone to pass to. Can't find it there. Ball squirts out again. We're going to penalty this time against Great Lakes for a player not supporting their own body weight. Ubana, a chance to put this downfield, get another attack here. 15 and a half minutes gone of this contest. Still no score. It was a great defensive effort there from the Tri-State Foundry, and it all started with the mall defense. More and more these days, you see teams want to back out of that mall, not even engage, but they took it on head first, drove the Great Lakes back, and it was only here that they even got to where they started, where they should have been after phase one from the line out. And that pressure ultimately resulted in a turnover from the Thunderbirds after a few more phases. But the, the Tri-State Foundry, I love the way they took on that line out mall straight away, pushed it back. That's the way to fight it, not avoid it, and uh, immediately put the Great Lakes team under pressure. And the result is a midfield line out here and a little bit of attacking rugby if they can execute. Ball up to the middle there. Great work from Dooley Sai. Here comes the danger man slipping through, gets that ball away. Replacement, Mohamed Barry. Mo Barry gets it out to the wing. That's Aiden Stretch taking that one in, the Yale man. 
Gets the ball up into Sean Collins' hands. Sean Collins puts a little pass over to Jude Minich. Minich from Fairfield University plays for Austin Ryan. Growing program there, Austin Ryan, full-time director of rugby. Mark Nemec University president, longtime rugby player and referee. Ball gets popped up, knocked down there by Tri-State. Just a little bit of a leading pass. Going to be a great Lakes ball here. Yeah, unfortunate there from Tri-State. They were able to reverse field, though. They started in their own end. They gained some yardage, maybe a little bit too loose with the ball. You got to go through your paces here. Take your time, tighten it up a little bit, especially when you get into that money zone. When you start attacking into that last 22, you get into that red zone, that's when you got to tighten it up. Really, you've already earned your points. If the other team commits a penalty or they make a mistake, you're already going to get your points. You've earned them. Just hold on to the ball at that point. Bring your splits in a little tighter. And maybe when the Tri-State Foundry get in next time, they'll take a little bit better care of the ball. Great legs feed the scrum there, but that one pops up. A referee is going to have it down again. Less than a minute to go on the game clock here. Scoreless in this quarterfinal. Very exciting. I don't know, Pat Clifton. I might ask you for a second half prediction if we end up scoreless here. All right. It's been a great contest so far. Neither team's really gotten into too much of uh, rhythm offensively, but that's really from the sense of urgency and the great defense we're seeing from both sides. It's what I chalk it up to. The counterattack has been fantastic. Knee Miller gets this one in. The big front row of Delgado Wall and Green. Keeping it down. Good drive from Tri State. Pressure on Chip Fumbu. Chip Fumbu. Electric gets across the 22. Puts a little pass in there to Caramazondo. The Wheeling University teammates working at it, but ball comes down the way of Ben Clow. Ben Clow takes that one in. Clow, the UConn economics major. And it's Staples High School, the Wreckers in Westport. Connecticut, but off their feet come the Great Lakes. 20 minutes elapsed on the clock here, but an opportunity can't end the penalty. So opportunity for Gubana to move this one downfield. It's unfortunate there. Ivan Delgado in the counter ruck found himself a complete and utter athletic mismatch. Swallowed the first guy to the ruck for the Tri-State Foundry. But then the fullback, Brian Arnold, came behind him and lost his feet trying to play the ball. And... He was the one who got pinged for the penalty. I think he got tackled, though. It might have been just a missed call. But a great counter ruck from Ivan Delgado to give the Great Lakes yeah. a shot at that ball. Unfortunately, they had to turn around, and now they're going to have to play some, find some stiff defense. A couple of times earlier, it's been Tyler Waterstrot coming up with a big play when they've been down here. <clears throat> Let's see if they can answer the bell or if the foundry can punch one in and get our first score of the game. To the front they go to Big Basuku. Basuku is running, but a referee says free kick to Great Lakes. Didn't go five. Opportunity goes there. Almost a certain try for the big fella, but not going to happen now. We take another look. If you tap it and kick it out, we're, we're done. Yeah. Actually, you don't even have to tap it. You can just kick it out. Ooh. Oh, that's my favorite play as a tight head prop. That was always straight to me, but... You got to make sure that it goes and five. So when you're standing zero, zero at the end of the first half here. Predictions for the second, Pat. Uh, I predict more ferocious defense, but someone will score and whoever does will win. At least you didn't say rugby is today's winner. We're going to come back with second half action in just a second. All tied up at zero. Lots to play for for both these teams. We'll see you in a minute. Is that your sax? Is that your music?
in our game. We play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We are the crouch, we are the bind, we are the set, we are the squeeze, we are the hit. We are Rhino, home of the scrum. Donuts, it is Tri-State Foundry in the blue taking on Great Lakes. The Thunderbirds, they are on left to right on your screen wearing gray. John Brover with Pat Clifton, all to play for quarterfinals, National Collegiate Rugby, All-Star Shield weekend. A great second half coming up. What's going to be the difference maker, Pat Clifton? Well, we'll see if one of these defenses breaks at some point. So far, they have been the difference maker. Tri-State really putting a lot of pressure on Great Lakes early, but they came up with timely defensive plays, timely turnovers. That ball carrier right there, a couple of them himself. So somebody's going to have to make a play on offense and make that final line break. Great work there by this Foundry team. That's Mo Problem, Mo Barry, Mo Problems. Mohamed Barry at number 16. I've been waiting to make that joke all day. Goes in and forces that turnover. Great play by Barry. NYU and Nazareth, Global Studies major. Play for Play Rugby USA, great program in New York City. Forces that turnover, Gubana pushes it downfield. The Red Fox gets some good ground on that one. Tri-State Foundry, opportunity here for an attack close to the line. Love what Ty Daniels is doing with that Nazareth program up there. Number of those players out here representing with this Tri-State Foundry team very well. Ball up to the front to Sai. Dulay Sai gets to hold that one. They put it in the middle of the field. Gubon on the wraparound. Gets the ball out to Kyrie Poole. Kyrie Poole gets the ball to Tony Robinson. Tony Robinson. Lose the ball. Gets in the touch. Ball back across. Mo Barry was looking forward. But Minich steps in and takes a hold of it. Wayne P.A. LaSalle College High School player. Ubana nearly makes a break there, but the hole closes down for him eventually. Players coming in, good contest in the breakdown, but we're coming back across. There's Mo Barry, Mo Barry coming in. Ubana can't hold on to that one, turns it over. Another little knock on creeps in. Ubana not pleased with himself. We're gonna go back for a scrum here to the Great Lakes, Pat. Jensvold almost hauled in the interception off of that first knock on, so he's not pleased either. If he'd have caught that thing, he might've had some room to run. A big lock from Louisville. Couldn't tell if that was energy or anarchy coming from the second row of Tri State. I think energy would probably serve you better in a scrum. 
crouch. I love how vocal these pack downs are. Guys, I'm not seeing them Certainly coming forward. I'm seeing you pulling out. Get, get down in there. Coming together is part of the process. Yeah. Referee conferring with the front rows on how he'd like them to scrummage. Crouch. Fine. Player coming up here for Great Lakes. Guys, is anyone here interested in scrummaging? Yes. Because all I'm seeing right now is guys pulling out. All right. I'm happy with the setup on the on the crouch on the bind. People are just pulling out. Okay. If we need to keep that space, let's keep that space. But let's stop standing up if we don't have to. Okay. Yeah, we got a new eight man. We're just going to. Okay. My apologies. Time's going to be back on. I appreciate the excuse from the hooker. I don't think it has much to do with the eight man. Just a lot of gamesmanship between the front row. This is an important scrum. It's zero to zero. The smallest of margins will win here. Just settle down and worry about your body position and doing what your communication with your teammates are telling you to do. Is anybody interested in scrummaging? Never heard that one before. Break off the back comes. Here come Great Lakes. That's Karim Zondo. Electric when he gets going. I heard it was Juma. My apologies. I've been mixing those two up this game. Chipfumbu. A little quick move there. Breaking through some space. Finally getting a little run. Knee Miller. Try to move that one on. Lots of passes here from this Great Lakes Thunderbird team. Keeping the ball alive. Coaching staff will be pleased to see that. Chip Fumbu finds some space. Chip Fumbu is dangerous. Chip Fumbu gets tripped up. He's got an advantage back there. Ball's been picked up. A referee's going to whistle. We may get a card here. We'll see what comes down. Hold the mark where the ball landed. I think just a little bit of contact off the ball. Captain. Great play by Chip Fumbu. Reed Hammond shot up in that defensive line. Gave way too much space for a player like Chief. So Chip Fumbu. He squirted right through. The bias. He's going past. Whoa, I was he's the last person back. Yeah, that's the way it was. No, it was going to be a yellow card. Yeah. Now, Captain. Yes, sir. Him and pleading the case, the yellow card comes with a look pass. Yep, there's Tell the space the that he landed. gave him, but so says he tripped him, and I think he's absolutely right. Tony Robinson there. sticking out his right leg to trip up Chief Kinship Fumbu. Great call here by the referee. <laughs> absolutely. That is his foot this is Mark Guy, hitting so the need upper back, thigh here. of Chief Chip Fumbu. He is lucky that it was just a yellow, frankly. And uh, the foundry you're going to be without one of the best players on the field for five minutes. And he's shortened half. I'm be thinking about the shot at goal here, to be perfectly honest. But it looks like Great Lakes want to play some rugby. Great Lakes, we haven't mentioned their coaching staff. John Harley, Sanders, Slavats, or Slavats, excuse me, Mike Geibel from Wheeling, Seth Irwin, Wes Say, and John Fox. Good coaches from across the Midwest. And they are going to take the shot at goal. And Mike Geibel comes out with a tee. He wants to draw the short straw. Which coach wants to run it out there? <laughs> this is a Miller fortunate play by Tony Robinson. Chief Chifumbu slips through. Robinson goes up to try and block the kick. Nothing he can do at that point but commit a penalty, which he chooses to do. Just a bang-bang decision. Unfortunate for him. It's going to... Give him some fresh legs at least when he comes back in a handful of minutes. And the Great Lakes really making a. You've got 15 seconds to take the kick. This wind is pretty brutal, knocking the ball off the tee. Perhaps why they were considering playing the ball instead of kicking it. And that one is good. The first lead of the game goes to. The Great Lakes, 3 nothing. That's the small margins, right? I mean, this is a really good game. This is the first break that anybody's made. The first real mistake that anybody has been able to punish. And that's how quickly it can make. Just one poor decision by Tony Robinson, who's had a, a blinder of a game otherwise. And now you've conceded the first points of the contest. 
Ball up, Foundry. Well done. Good move for them. Minich comes up with it eventually. This is what they need, possession of the ball. lupano has got a good boot. They can tie it up if they need to. Down by a player. Basuku takes that one in. Georgie Basuku. And dump tackle comes in. Scrum half. Well taken was Davis. Ball picked up by Sean Collins. Collins takes it on a couple of steps. The penalty against Tri-State. Yeah, just a little bit of misfortune. I think a couple of those pieces of contact could have gone the other way. Could have had a penalty for the manhandling of the scrum half from the Tri-State Foundry against the Great Lakes, but they got away with that potentially dangerous tackle. A lot of people congratulating Larry Old there. So assuming it was him that forced that turnover. It's going to be a line out here just outside the 40 meter line. You can see how the wind is kicked up. Assistant referee flag. Up in the breeze. <laughs> Cupcake is the call. You're discussing it as they approach the line. Larry Old from Harare putting this one in. Ball comes back. To Tri-State, Ubana thought about passing it out, but launches one downfield of the boot. Doesn't find green grass, finds one of the Great Lakes players. That's Noah King. King takes it into contact. All the way here. To the hands of Ivan Delgado. Oh, that's Delgado. Sorry, I had the wrong number there. Delgado making a big break. Delgado steps another one. Delgado with a good offload. Up into the hands of J.D. Farrell. Haven't seen too much of Farrell. Reed Hammond over that one, but penalty called against Tri-State. I was surprised. What a player was over there pretty clean for the foundry. The yeah, he was over the ball for sure. Couldn't tell if he had his hands on it. Difficult to tell on that one. If you don't have your hands there, at some point you're going to get a penalty called against you. But I thought he was in position. Delgado the makes the big break, the big drop. unit. Look at the offload. There's Hammond right over the top of the ball. You're right, he's in great position, but I'm not so sure. Yeah, he did have his right hand on that thing. He had all rights to it. I think that we missed the call here. Unfortunate for Tri-State. Great Lakes come down with that one. That opened it right up there, but oh. player just knocks it forward. What a mistake at the end there. We're going to come back. Referee. And award a goal line dropout to the founder back. here. He wants that back for sure. He just couldn't believe what he saw. He came down. No one was guarding him. They were trying to avoid the mall and forgot that they had to tackle the guy with the ball before they worried about that. All that green grass parts the Red Seas. Oh, my God, I'm going to score. Oh, my God, I'm going to score. He tries to get it out. And unfortunately, costs it up. Goal line dropout goes into the hands of Peyton Wall. Peyton Wall is going to put right back in the position they just were. Great legs ball up there to Delgado. Delgado with that great footwork. Delgado, 5'11", 240, can step. Ball up to the almost try scorer. Little pop up there, looking to drive it in again. Held up. Good work there by Kyrie Poole. Another penalty against Tri State for player not supporting their weight. And big boy going at it. Delgado wants the five points. Delgado's at the line. Delgado's over. Five points. Ivan Delgado. Right now, the beating heart of this Great Lakes team. Once in college, I played with a, a fullback. He had run out of his eligibility in football. And I used to always run up close and point blank distance right here like Delgado does. And I would get stymied and turned over. He said, when you hit that contact, just roll and keep the feet moving. And that's exactly what Delgado does here. He hits that contact, gets stymied, he rolls, keeps his feet moving, and he buys himself that extra six, eight, ten 10 inches to splash over the line and get the score. Great run by Delgado. Yeah, so whatever subs we were holding, we can send on now. Jensvold with a big carry right before that. We saw him cough the ball up just a few phases ago. Right off the line out, that thought brings, he was going to score. That brings it to 8-0. to zero. 
We take a look at the other field here. 10 7 Pacific State over Mid Atlantic. Close one. Started a few minutes after the game we have now. Tim Wilkes calling on that field. Parker Marquis, the UVU Wolverine, splashing over for a try. Look at this red zone action we got. Milan Van Wick, <laughs> part of the assist team. Okay, thank you. Look at that. Meanwhile, it goes to 10 to nil. Great Lakes over Tri State. We'll get that fixed up. Yeah, he just came back. It's in Montgomery Score coming off for the Great Lakes. That's a big okay, change. Go. Very good player for them. Long kick there. Okay, play knock on advantage. Come on. It's a knock on. I'm just making sure he's got a, a head knock. <laughs> Referee. Make sure player's okay. Players just want to keep going. Listen, do you want to talk? Was it just like in your face or was yeah, it a head it knock? Okay, are you okay to go? Continue? Okay. So we're just going to have the scrum here from the kickoff. Player says he's okay. It's our ball, boys. We're Certainly yeah, appreciate the, the referee First taking scrum. the extra second. Sure, safety. That's the number one job of him yeah, on that field. Send this on, love me. Mark's right here, boys. Good job, Larry. Bro. All right, Larry, go. Larry, go. Come on. <laughs> Foundry ball here. Foundry down 10 nil. Scoreboard is off here. Come on, Patrick. Come on, James. He's scared, boy. An absolute battle of attrition, and you can tell the subs rolling on for both teams. Having to go deep in the bench and trust them. 0 0 at halftime. The differences have only started to be made here in the second half and very recently. I understand what you're complaining about. Davis to put this one in again. Both reach, listen, both reach for the number, reach onto the back, okay? Not onto the shoulder. There we go. Come on, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Just a binding issue, simple binding issue. It's all fixed now. Reach for the number, not the shoulder. We have no problems going forward. <laughs> Scrum of lessons here in Houston. Time running out here on the Founder. They're down by at least two scores here. Need to get something going quickly. A referee's going to whistle. He's going to give the penalty to Tri-State. Tri-State still has some time. Ball out the back for the Foundry. Foundry, get that ball up. Nice moves coming on here. Ball goes out to Ben Clow. Clow pops that one up. Good work there. And to Aiden stretches hands. Ball getting dug out here by Davis. Up into the hands of Jonah Clark. Clark takes that one into contact. Davis again finds Gubana. Gubana gets the ball to Mo Barry. Mo Barry trying to move a little wide there to Braden Thompson. Braden Thompson finding some room. Braden Thompson finding Tony Robinson. Tony Robinson steps Shifumbu. Two men with similar running styles are going to back for a penalty here. We'll see what the ref decides to do. That's my bad. I tried to grab your jersey. My bad. Thirsty, get back on the line, please. Let me just get the, you the captain now? Referee having a little conversation with Great Lakes. The hair of the ball carrier in there. I'm not convinced that it was intentional, why it's going to be a penalty only. But let's just clean that up, okay? I got you, I tried to yeah, it. Dangerous tackle. My bad. Yeah. Get on the line and wait. You hope there'd be no intentional hair pulling between those two guys. Lots of hair to choose from <laughs> on either side. Patrick Heffright was going to go with that one. They get the ball to Jonah Clark instead. Here comes Tri-State. Tri-State, just about five minutes left in the game, down 10 points. They can get a try in here. It'll help them out a lot. Another penalty. You have to watch out, not rolling away. Heffright looking for this one. They need these five points here. Referee going to have a word. Oh, the gamesmanship. All game, all 40 minutes. Let me get out of the way. That's the man who I'd want to have the ball if I was the Tri-State coach. <laughs> Sean Collins looking for the line. Sean Collins held up there. What's going to happen? Referee on the spot. And he's going to call this one held up. It is going to be a goal line dropout for Great Lakes. Not low enough on that. Might want to have thought about a little bit of a different approach. Tri-State, but no matter. 
I got you. you know what he didn't do? He didn't do the roll. You hit, you got to roll. If he rolls here and keeps up there, oh. finally a little bit late. And there's about six bodies around him at that point. Now if I'm the great late, I'm figuring out where Tony Robinson is. Yep. Now that I'm the Great Lakes, I'm trying to find Tony Robinson, and I'm kicking the opposite direction from him. I do not want him to be one to be catch this ball directly or be one pass away from it, making sure I get a good chase on here. This is actually the Thunderbirds are under a lot of pressure right now. They just don't know it yet because they haven't kicked the ball because the ball is dead. But this is a uh, difficult situation to be in for the Great Lakes. Send him. John Collins understandably needs a little dab of some blood off of his face after running into about 36 Thunderbirds at the goal line. You're going to be able to get that stop? Do you want to just bring a blood sub on? Because we got to get started. What's the time? Less than five. But we're running out of our time slot here. Yeah. Less than five minutes ago, you hear the referee okay. discussing that one. We have goal line drop out here. Time is stopped. Opportunity to attack here for Tri-State. Put it towards the touchline. Clark gets it. Good hands. Clark takes a step. Takes two or three Great Lakes players with him. Great Lakes player. Well, not rolling away there, but referee's going to give a penalty in the other direction. Great Lakes opportunity moves one downfield. Late game, good fortune for the Thunderbirds. Yeah, certainly. I think Kyrie Poole has a good argument there. He was a little miffed to lose that ball. I'm not sure Chief Chip Fumbu, who had got the call made, really had any right to that ball or was earnestly close to playing it. So a bit of a tough call for the Tri-State Foundry, but... In these final few minutes, they've got to find a way to bounce back. Good, hard-charging run by the man with soft hands. Chip Fumbu, he's over the top of the ball, but one hand, his right hand, you can see, is clearly on the ground the entire time. So if he's actually possessing that ball and playing it, he's only doing it with his left hand. As you can see, Chip Fumbu's right hand just on the ground. Good result. Ball back here. Great Lakes. Under control there. Ball in the hands of Juma. Nee Miller is going to play the territory game and launches one downfield. Ball is rolling back into the try zone. Robinson has a hold of it. Robinson touches it down. They're going to have to move this one back. <laughs> if it would have gone dead, it would have been the option. But since you made it dead, it's the goal line dropout. It's unfortunate for Tri-State. Robinson didn't have a whole lot of room to work with. It was a little bit of a risk. He could have tried to let it dribble out the back of the try zone. And if he would have, they would have... Foundry would have had the ball way further up the field where it was kicked from. Robinson had to put it down. Didn't have much of a choice. Now they're fighting their way Here out of their own end. Foundry on attack. Braden Thompson going with this one. Time running out. Three and a half minutes on the game clock. Referee will have the time. Robinson moves that one. Quickly out to the wing they go. In the hands of Aiden. Stretch. Stretch. Tackle immediately. Davis goes back again. Bigger runners coming in there, about 30 meters out from their own line. Going to have to do a bit of work here, a little roll forward. And player gets called for leaving his feet there. His intended target moved out of the way, but he left his feet nonetheless, so. You can't leave your, people leave their feet in a ruck all the time. This is one of the toughest things for people to gather, you know, new players or onlookers, observers. If you make contact and you bind, onto the opposite player in the ruck, then you are part of the ruck. And if you fall at that point, if you lose your feet at that point, referees are gonna let that go. But if you don't actually bind onto a guy from the other side before you leave your feet, that's a penalty every single day. And that's what we just saw. Take a look at the field, 22-7 Pacific Coast coming up on Mid-Atlantic. Looking strong here. You see a little Mid-Atlantic knock on there. So Pacific Coast continue to get their favors. As we come back to this game, it's going to be Great Lakes up 10-0. Just a couple of minutes left in this one with an opportunity driving mall potential here. Want to waste some time as Thunderbirds put that one up. Chris Jensfold gets a hold of it. Players are digging the ball out here. One of the foundry players can't get themselves out of there. Still got to get out of the way. You can't just stand there. On the line. 
On the five. <laughs> Nine behind you. Behind you on the line. James Aiken just Second flopping on top of the ball from an offside position. That was an easy call. Chip Fumbu puts a little one back in. Look at that. That is Aaron Juma. Aaron Juma touches that one down. Great work for the wheeling man from Harare. He is looking tremendous out here. The Zimbabwean business major and first year player for Mike Geibel at Wheeling University. You know, coming out of halftime, how you asked me what the difference was going to be in the second half? Ask me again. What's Great the difference going to be in the second half? In there to chip <laughs> Well, it's going to be the yellow card that Tony Robinson picks up. It was 0-0 zero to zero until the Tri-State Foundry went down a man. And when they did, that opened up exactly the lane that the great big Thunderbirds needed. They put three scores on the board after that. And that one was the result of a beautiful inside pass from one wheeling cardinal to another. Chief to Juicy. Huh. It's fun to watch. Referee letting the player know he doesn't have too much time. Coming after this on this field, we're going to have the Southeast Bears versus Midwest Barbarians. That kick is good. That brings them up to 17. That's the end. Moving on to the semifinals are the Great Lakes Thunderbirds. Tri-State Foundry will move on to the last place bracket there. We're going to come back with the first Losers Bracket game. Losers Semifinal coming up in just a minute. Stick with us. Appreciate the help. play with our hearts we don't play with sticks bats or gloves we don't wear shoulder pads or helmets we keep playing when it hurts and we leave everything 